Welcome back everyone. And now we're finally at the point where we can start creating cubes. So one of the first questions that's asked when you learn how to make cubes is how many points does it take? And most people will say eight because, you know, there are eight corners to a cube. Now the thing is, that's not true. You, you actually need 24 points to create a cube. Uh, each corner has to be du duplicated about three times. But you know, it's usually in the beginning, it's hard to explain why that is the case. So I know when I would start learning, I was like, that didn't make no sense. I'm going to actually try to make a cube with eight points. And, and in today's lessons, we're going to do that. We're going to do it the wrong way first and then create the right way. So this way you see visually why it doesn't work. So we're going to start off by opening up our jl.js file. And we're going to create a new class called glutil. And inside it, we're going to have a static function called RGB array. What this thing t uh, function does, it takes in a bunch of hex color codes and converts them into uh, float arrays. Um, so this way, we can stop messing around with uh, trying to guess colors. Uh, I thought, you know, since I'm going to use some colors, why not facilitate some way to make it easier to convert colors into uh, WebGL? So that's what all this thing does. Um, I really don't need to explain it too much. It's just a, it just goes through the arguments array and just converts um, each two hex values into a value that exists between 0 and 1. Next up is we're going to modify the primitives.js file. We're going to add in a new class called cubebad. This is our bad version of the cube. Um, there's not much that goes into this. We're just defining our eight points. And inside our eight points, we're defining a fourth component. So it's going to be X, Y, Z, and we're going to use a W as the index color that we're going to pass in with a uniform. So each corner is getting a color. Um, then we have the UVs. You know, the UVs are the coordinate systems for um, uh, each face. And then the index defines the triangles that creates our cube. So it's using the index and it, we're defining every face of the cube except for bottom because uh, there's no point in defining because I'm kind of building this as trial and error so um, so yeah by using those four or right, those eight points in the a vert array we're gonna reuse them over and over again to create every single face so this will actually generate a cube for us then we move back to our view.html page and we're gonna start uncommenting a couple things like line 37, I'm on I'm commenting out uh, a lot of our texture stuff because we don't need the textures right now. We can uncomment them later. So let's get rid of textures for now so they're not in the way. And um, the only big change is line 49. We are putting in our cube bad. And we're setting a position a little bit above the origin so it lives above the grid. Now moving on to our render callback. Uh, we're going to uncomment, or sorry, we're going to comment out pre-render because we don't need it right now because that handles uh, a lot of our textures for our uh, shader from our previous lesson. And we're going to add a new function to the chain, which is set time. So this way we can do some animations down the line. And we scroll down a little further, and now we're going to start modifying our test shader. Uh, we're going to add some extra uniforms. We're going to use uTime, and we're going to do uColor. Uh, we've done this pre before in the previous lesson, you color, uh, which is like an, an array, a uniform array. But now we're going to use our new function that uh, lets us pick colors easily and convert everything into something WebGL. So this should make it a lot easier. And then the last thing we do is create our set time function. All it does is just pass in a uniform data for us. Next up is modifying our vertex shader. Uh, one of the things we got to do is on line 113 is we're going to change VEC3 to VEC4 because remember we're adding the fourth component um, in our uh, cube and did this so we can denote colors. And then we on line 120 and 121, we got a new uniform. So we got our color array that we're going to we're passing in and our time. And down at 128, uh, we're going to set the color that uh, for our, our varying variable that's going to be passed to our fragment shader. And um, 
129, we're changing a position. Instead of just passing in a position, we're saying, okay, we're passing in X, Y, Z because the W value uh, we don't want being used here because we're using the YW for something else. And the last thing on this page is the fragment shader. Uh, we're going to put in our incoming variant color, our very variable color, and then we're going to change our main function a little bit. We're going to comment out the final color that's coming from the texture, and we're just going to push in the color that uh, we have indexed from our uColor um, uniform array. Now we're ready to see what BabCube looks like. So now if you go into your Chrome browser and refresh or whatever, you'll see what our cube looks like. So you should see something like this. It's, it goes from red to green, and that's because we only have eight points. Uh, since we're defining every face using only eight points, we only have eight attributes worth of information. So there's no way to define the top, the, the left, the right, and bottom faces. So that's the problem that we have with making cubes with eight points. Now, if this is the type of effect you're looking for, then you definitely can do it this way. Uh, you know, it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Are you trying to accomplish a weird effect like this, or do you actually want a real cube where each face is definable and each face can be textured? Because we can't texture cubes uh, with just eight points because as you say, the front face and the back face were, will interpolate the re remaining faces because we only have eight points. So the only way to make a perfect cube that's both color correctly or textured correctly we have to make each face its own quad so just like in the previous lessons where I said quads are very important to make a real perfect cube you actually literally have to make a quad for each face and then tie them all together so this is the main reason why we can't really make cubes with eight points it's just because the way the system works there's no way to define the attributes for the remaining four faces because those eight points only define the front and the back face. There's no way to define the remaining faces. We can reuse those points to create the triangles for those faces, but we cannot apply attributes to those faces, like colors and textures. So let's go and start making the real cube. Now we go back to our primitives, and we're going to create our cube class. Um, this one is built so down the line you guys or maybe even I can do certain things with it. Um, we can define the cube by width, height, depth, and actually by its starting pos central position. The uh, reason why it built it this way is because of um, in the event that we want to have one mesh, but put like 100 cubes in one mesh, so we can render 100 cubes in one go. Kind of like how we did our multi-quads. You know, maybe down the line we can reuse this mesh function to create all our cube meshes uh, in case we want to do something uh, voxel type of stuff you know like minecraft type of thing i definitely want to do voxel down the line um, so maybe this will be a way to pay forward in the future um, so right now we have our class and we got our two static functions in there and um, all, all i'm doing is defining Every single face, and every single face gets its own attribute. That fourth attribute would, uh, that defines the color. So it's basically just repeating the exact eight points over and over again, but we're repeating them to define every single face. So as I scroll down, you know, we have more, the rest of the faces defined, and then we have an array that um, uses like a little a little simple algorithm that generates the index uh, for all the faces. So I built the faces just in the right order where this little algorithm can generate the index that's just right for me. So I don't have to define the array, you know, one by one for every single uh, vertice that we have. And then we go to UV, same thing. Um, and since everything's built the exact same way, I'm able to push the exact same UV settings for every single vertice. And um, let's see if we scroll down some more. And then we have the normals. Normals, I, I couldn't come up with a way to do it programmatically, so I had to just hard code everything. And all it does is point in the direction that the face is. So, you know, f in, in uh, a normal is just a vector that's normalized. 
and it just pointed your at it a specific direction. So that's all it does. And we'll actually get to see what normals can ha help us do uh, other than just deal with lighting. We, it can actually help us with some kind of fun animations that I kind of discovered the other day and decided to incorporate into this lesson at the last second. And then, you know, it creates our mesh and we return it. Now all we got to do is go back to our HTML page and remove bad cube and just call it cube. And then if we go to the browser and refresh, there it is. There's our cube, a perfectly defined cube. Each face defined has its own defined color. And and that that's it. Each face is basically a quad that's all tied together and it each one is self-defined. So basically every corner is repeated three times, the, the vertice. And that's the whole gist of making a cube. But you guys should know me by now, and I don't end things like that. So we're going to have some fun with the cube now that we have a, a working cube. So if we go back to our fragment shader, uh, you'll see that I actually start messing around a lot. <laughs> uh, a lot of different ways. Uh, I, there's about, uh, let's see, five different ways to define the colors for each face. Um, I, I highly suggest you go and uncomment and try each one out and, and see what the effects are. So I'm just going to show you, the, you know, the, the gist of it is I'm mixing textures with colors. And by the way, uh, to make this work, you got to go back and uncomment everything that we did we uh, for textures. Because in the beginning, we uh, co um, commented out a couple of lines. Just go back and uncomment them. So this way we can use textures if you want to. Um, if you don't want to use textures, you can just ignore this part. Um, so right here, we're just defining different ways of colors. So... Um, yeah, it's just uh, it's mixing colors. Like uh, line one forty three just uses textures by itself, and then by one forty four I start mixing colors with the textures in different fashion. So we end up getting different effects, and then uh, I settled with one forty seven, which uses the mix function, which kind of does a transition between two colors. So there'd be the color that you picked and the color you textured, and I want the color that is eighty percent in between those two colors. That's what I'm doing. So if we go back to our browser, you'll see our cube is now colored and textured at the exact same time. And it's using the color that we defined and the texture that we had from the previous lesson. But wait, there's more. So we're going to go back to our primitives.js file. And at the bottom of our new cube, we're, after the mesh, we're going to add an extra line of code. Uh, we're going to set no calling to true. And this is only because we want to make the inside of the cube visible uh, when we render. Because right now, calling is turned on. That means anything that's the backside of a face is not rendered at all. So we're gonna, we want to render both sides of the face. Now we're going to go back to our vertex shader in our HTML page, and we're going to do some modifications. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to add our normal at the very top at line 114. Um, Everything's already set up for that, so we just want to use it now in our shader. And then at 127, we're actually going to create a function in our shader. So this is a function that I saw in a YouTube video the other day when I was looking at um, Reddit, uh, WebGL forums. And I watched the video, and it had a really cool animation of um, where it had a mesh of a bunny, and it made it grow and implode you know, in an animation style. And it did a bunch of other weird things. Uh, so I kind of incorporated this that into this lesson uh, at the last second because I thought it'd be kind of fun just to add in. And it actually really uh, helps teach you that what the cube really is. The cube really is just four quads, or sorry, six quads uh, tied together. This will actually illustrate that point exactly. So I'm really happy to get to see that on uh, Reddit and got to see the video. Um, I'm going to see if I can find that link again and post it uh, with this hopefully in the description so you guys can watch it and maybe you can learn a couple of cool things I didn't get to see the whole thing but once I saw this part I had to go back to the code and try it out and uh, get it ready for um, you know for uh, making a lesson so yeah if we go so we're gonna have that warp function which kind of takes the normal and the normal don't forget is a direction so we're telling our vertice that we want to move it in that specific direction by a certain amount. So that's all we're doing. Uh, that's all that's doing. And we're using time. Time is a, a constant moving forward value. So this way it allows us to do some kind of animation. 
And then uh, if we go to line 134, before we apply our position inside our VEC4 object, we warp it. We're just going to warp its position. So now back in the browser, you refresh, you get to see that now the cube is now animating. Each face is moving away from its original position by uh, 0.2 uh, units. And this really illustrates that this cube that we built is really just four quads together. So that is the gist of it. But, you know, let's go back to the code and do some more changes. So if we go back and comment out the line and add a new line, do, we're going to just change this, uh, the, some values around, and we're going to add the Y component. And that's something that the YouTube video did. They just added a Y component, and it went from imploding to kind of this weird wavy effect. It looks really cool when you're dealing with a complex mesh like a bunny. But it looks a little different when you were just dealing with cubes and we only have so little amount of triangles. So if you go back to the browser and you check it out, now you see that the faces aren't just you know, going back and forth now. Now they're kind of like wavy. They're kind of dancing around a little bit. So now the cube is a little bit, looks a little more interesting uh, than before. So let's go back to the code. Now, that, now, now we're having fun. So if we go back and we add a third line, and we're going to comment out the previous one. Now, you know, since the video added the Y component and added some real fun things to it, for fun, I, I decide, okay, let me, let's add the rest of the components. Let's see what happens when you mess around with the other components and see what kind of animations that happen. And if you go back to browser, now you see the animations are really funky. Now each quad is dancing, and it's, it's now we've got a rave party in our uh, WebGL canvas. So that, that's pretty much the end of it. Um, this is the end, and I hope you guys love it, and I hope you're having fun with this. This is great. I, To me, I'm excited. I love this. This is great stuff. So, yeah, if you have anything cool that, that you might think I find interesting, maybe something I can take apart and uh, incorporate into lessons. So, like I always say, if you have any uh, comments, any suggestions, any complaints, feel free to tell me. I'll, I'll try my best. Um, I'm trying to fix this cotton mouth problem I have. I tried doing some uh, research on how to fix it. So hopefully this video has the slurping sound a little bit less. Um, so yeah, I, I try to take anything you guys say seriously uh, to try to help improve everything. And um, if you like it, just like and subscribe. It'll help me out a lot. So thanks and see you guys at the next lesson.